Hey, Jay here. Let's talk about my favorite gear. So if you don't know me, my name is Jay Hosking. I make music with hardware, synthesizers, sequencers, drum machines, groove boxes, effects, and so on. And I've been very, very lucky to try many, many, many pieces of gear over the last few years. Uh, one of the most common questions that I get about gear is what should I buy or what is the best synth? Uh, what should you buy and what is the best synth are really tough questions. So I normally uh, try to espouse the virtues of each particular piece of hardware and talk about its shortcomings uh, in an honest way. But I do have favorites and I do have uh, pieces of gear that I think are my favorite mono synth, my, my favorite bass synth, my favorite all-arounder and so on. And so what I thought I'd do today is talk about what those favorites are and why they're my favorites and the jobs and roles that they serve. A uh, quick note just before we do that, uh, I'll tell you that my own perspective is that the difference between hardware and software is performability. Hardware is not just about analog circuitry, but rather that you can perform with it in a way that uh, you just can't perform with looping sequences in a, uh, a digital audio workstation, a DAW. Uh, I've, I've made music for years. I was in bands and then uh, had a whole stretch where I was making music completely in the box. Uh, but I've come back to this whole hardware world because I can perform in the way that I perform a song on acoustic guitar or I perform a song in a band. I love the performance aspect of synths and as such, a lot of my favorites are related to this, this factor of being able to perform on them. Okay, without any further ado, let's get going. First, my favorite mono synth. My favorite mono synth uh, is actually one of the very first pieces of hardware I bought. Uh, certainly the first major piece of hard hardware I bought, but uh, aside from it being the first, it also ended up <laughs> just being exactly in that sweet spot of performability and unique character. And what I'm talking about here is the Moog Subsequent 37. The Moog Subsequent 37 is not the best bass synth. It's good for bass. It's not my favorite for bass, as we'll talk about later. Uh, it is not the clearest or highest or, or um, most piercing synth. In fact, it's quite warm in nature, but it has two major features going for it. One, it is just a delight to play. It is just wonderful to explore the panel and the keys feel really nice and it just it is just an instrument that is uh, begging to be interacted with. And two, it has such beautiful and unique sound that is not quite like anything else. It is a Moog, but it has its own kind of filter sound. It is uh, a mono synth uh, that can get dirty and clean, but it kind of sits really nicely in, in doing a little bit of both. Its mid-range is amazing, uh, and I just, every single time I touch it and explore it, I am happy. It is a synth that is definitely one of those desert island synths that you could just sit with, that and a reverb pedal, and be happy. So if you're looking for that one synth, that mono synth that will uh, allow you to explore and give you ri that rich analog sound, i go with the, the subsequent 37. Next, my favorite all-arounder. Uh, what I mean by an all-arounder synth is uh, tapping into the question I had at the very beginning, which is, which is the one synth to buy? Eventually, I realized that for myself, there is no one synth, uh, but if you are on a relatively limited budget, I certainly understand wanting to have one synth that handles 
all of the parameters. One synth that is great for bass, one synth that is great for leads and melodies, one synth that can do chords and polyphony, uh, one synth that even hopefully has some effects baked in as well. And so if there's one synth that is an all-arounder that I just love, it is the Sequential Take 5. The Sequential Take 5 sounds fantastic, but it doesn't just sound fantastic in one range. It's a tremendous bass synth. It's an excellent poly synth, uh, great for chords. It's a beautiful filter, does leads really nice, uh, has very usable, not the best, but very usable effects on board, and uh, just a lot of really smart features in terms of sound design and exploring the panel itself that make it very performable uh, and very versatile for very many roles. I really love the Take 5. If you're looking for the one synth, I would strongly recommend you taking a look at the Take 5. to my favorite bass synth. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who have been following my channel for a while, you probably have a pretty good idea of what my favorite bass synth is. Uh, it's small, it's unassuming, it is undeniably a classic. It is the Moog Minitor. The Moog Minitor is quintessential Moog sound in terms of the filter, in terms of I will very rarely turn the resonance up because I don't want to get rid of that uh, bass response, but it just, it has something. It is very simple, it's two oscillators, um, but the filter, the, the way the oscillators sing, and that square wave. There's just nothing that does the bottom end quite like the Moog Minitar. So when I need something uh, that is a reliable, great bass sound and that can fill in a variety of low end roles, it's the Minitar. Check it out. All right, onto my favorite tabletop synth. Uh, by tabletop synth, what I mean is something that is ideally small, uh, that fits into a tabletop setup well. I do a lot of tabletop setups where I have many pieces of gear all on the table at once. Something that can uh, ideally have polyphony, so it can fill in chords or any other sort of role, and something that has its own character. And I don't think there's a better example of a great tabletop synth than the Dreadbox Nymphez. The Nymphez sounds so so good. It sounds old somehow. Uh, really, really beautiful. It has great filter. It has an absolutely essential thing that all versatile synths should have, which is both a low pass and a high pass filter. So you can really dial in that mid range to fit in a mix. It can do leads and melodies really, really great. Uh, it can make this haunting, weird, spooky stuff. It can be bright. It can even do bass pretty well. It's a pretty great unit. It's astounding that Dreadbox was able to get it into to such a small size. Really a tremendous synth. If you need something to round out your table uh, and it's just something that sounds good, go with the Nymphes.
Okay, next one is a sample-based groove box. I've, I've split up my groove boxes here into sample-based and synth-based because I find that uh, I would love to have one that does all of them perfectly, uh, but there really isn't one that is like the groove box. In terms of sample-based groove boxes, it has to be the poly -M tracker. The poly -M tracker uh, has its shortcomings, of course, I'm sure. We can, you can learn all about them in other videos, but the poly -M tracker does the thing that you really need a good performance device to do. It is extremely deep in terms of uh, sound design and sound shaping. In addition to that depth, it's also extremely performable. It has this whole performance page where you can custom set up your uh, different performance parameters, much like the, the Octatrack in its scenes. Uh, but you can also, in addition to setting up these parameters, decide which of the different tracks are going to be affected by these performance parameters. Uh, it's an extreme fun instrument to play. It's probably my favorite group box for just goofing around creating dynamic ever-changing drum patterns uh, from a series of one shots. So the poly -end tracker really is this beautiful device that does a lot and also just feels great in the hands. It's the right size and shape and a lot of fun to work on. I really like overall my experience working with the tracker. Next up is synth-based groove boxes. What I mean here is not only a groove box in the sense of having a sequencer and being able to really formulate a bunch of uh, individual parts of a larger song, but also in addition to that, uh, being able to go really deep in the sound design and really sort of shape the sounds and perform the sounds how you want to. Uh, and my favorite for this is easily the Electron Analog 4 Mark II. The Analog 4 Mark II has a fantastic range of sounds, an extremely limited polyphony that somehow, because of the uh, parameter locking design of Electron, leads to tremendous creativity. You can um, parameter lock individual oscillators on individual voices. So even though it only has four voices, you can lock individual oscillators on one of those voices to make intervals or chords. Or you could uh, lock it together so that you have a bass that's running the, the root note and also an octave above at the major third third uh, or minor third. In addition to that, the Analog 4 Mark II also has this fantastic macros page, this page that is totally designed for performance where you can very easily customize um, all of the different instrument parameters that are being controlled by a series of 10 macros. And with these macros, you can basically, you don't have to navigate through the Analog 4. You can just sit on this performance page and dial in your performance on these macros once you've set them up, which is a really easy process. So yeah, uh, oh, and did I mention it has fantastic bass? Thanks to uh, using the high pass filter with a little bit of uh, filter tracking and high resonance to really boost out that bass end. So really fantastic, uh, performable, device. I don't normally do the drums on it myself, but if you were to pair the uh, Analog 4 Mark II with the poly -M Tracker, you would be in very happy territory, I would argue. So yeah, check out the Analog 4. Onto drums. Now I'm going to be honest, I've never found the one drum machine that does exactly everything I want, but the closest I've found to that is actually a custom Eurorack design that uh, is just a bunch of modules I put together myself. Most of the, the drum voices are uh, from the PROC uh, DIY kits. I supplemented in some uh, additional drums like the like an 808 snare or the WMD um, fracture just to add some extra uh, interesting uh, stereo 
feel and, and, and unique sort of flavor to the, the overall sound. But why I really like the Eurorack drums is once again, performability. So on the one hand, there's the uh, Mutable Instruments Grids module. Grids uh, is already baked in with a bunch of drum sequences already. You do not have to do the work of writing the drum sequences. You just need to dial in uh, which um, part of the beat map you want to use, plus how densely filled you want the sequence to be. And so using uh, sequencer density as a control allows for you to do a really unique kind of uh, snare fill and, and uh, enter in the snare. So as you turn up that density, it doesn't just start to roll the snare, but it rather uh, it peppers the overall sequence with more and more and more snare until it finally fully fleshes out every single 16th note, or even doubles it up just 30 second notes. Uh, so this sort of combination of these uh, simple small drum modules plus something like Mutable Instruments Grids or maybe IntelliGel Steppy, which is another really, really fun device, uh, and plus you know one or two great uh, effects modules like the Endorphins Ghost, and you've got an amazing drum machine, and it's honestly better than any single drum machine that I've ever played with. There are some others that are really good, but that Eurorack drum set is really the one for me as of right now. onto my favorite portable synth. Now, by portable, what I mean is something that is ideally an onboard battery, something that is uh, easy to carry, easy to travel with, you don't have to be too worried about when it's in a bag, and that has its own set of sort of either limitations or inspirations or whatever else. So for me right now, honestly, the most inspiring portable device I have is the Dirty Wave Mate, which is also a tracker. It is uh, got its own great onboard synths. It has some based on the Mutable Instruments uh, open uh, uh, software. It's also got its own brand new Hyperwave synth that they just added in a recent update. And oh boy, that, that Hyperwave synth sounds amazing. Stereo, polyphonic, uh, so easy to set up and customize, uh, you know, unique chords for different parts of the song. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, it's got a great reverb and delay. Uh, it's <laughs> It is excellent for samples and even for sort of beat matching your slices. It takes a little bit of um, finagling, but you can still, you know, put in not only just one shot drums, but also drum loops and sort of get it to, to beat match with a little bit of work. And all those things are great, but I'll be honest, the, the interface itself isn't necessarily what I want to perform on. The, the real reason that um, the Mate has come to truly inspire me is its sequencing uh, workflow and sequencing overview. So it has patterns. The patterns are built into phrases. The phrases are built into an overall sequence. Uh, and because of this, this notes to patterns, to phrases, to sequences, you can build these really complex songs really quickly and easily that go far, far beyond a standard 16 or 32 or 64 looping uh, step sequence like you would on an electron or something like that. So it is just really fantastic to build long meandering sequencing parts. And so I've some of my uh, more recent songs have started as longer sequences that I was writing on the, the Dirty Wave Mate first. So when I'm traveling, that's the one I'm thinking of reaching for these days. This is the Mate. Check it out. Okay, second last is effects. I'm gonna be honest, I just love effects. I think they're the best. Uh, and honestly, I don't think that it's easy to pick 
uh, a few here. So uh, what I once again, what I'm going to focus on is just effects that I find to be either really, really versatile or extremely performable. So in terms of reverbs, there are many that are, that are great, I'll be honest. Uh, but the one that's sort of, again, if I have to reach for it, I need something simple, something I can dial in really quickly. I probably go with the, um, the Empress reverb. The Empress reverb has a lot of really great algorithms. They all sound really good. Uh, and some of them sound just sublime and it has no hidden or buried parameters aside from what you can sort of see directly on the panel itself, uh, which I find to be extremely valuable when I'm trying to quickly set something up. Uh, in terms of delay, now there, again, there are many delays that are amazing, but if, in terms of performability, there's nothing like the Erica Synth Zen delay. This thing is a magic maker. It is an instrument in and of itself. The Zen delay allows you to do a simple straight delay kind of sound or a stereo ping pong tape delay kind of sound or it allows you to go totally wild with it and perform it to really uh, pitch the actual audio uh, via changing the, the, the sort of delay time and really sort of feel the tape speeding up and slowing down, really feed it uh, in terms of the overall amount of feedback, having a strong control, getting it all the way down into that flanging territory, all the way up into these ridiculous robust loops. And then it has this great filter on board that when you crank up the resonance and then play the filter and the delay at the same time, it's magic. The Zen Delay is an amazing performable delay box. I highly recommend it. And then the last um, sort of standard uh, effect I'll mention is also the Maris Polymoon. The Maris Polymoon is ostensibly a delay. It can do taps, but really where the uh, Polymoon thrives is when you start to turn up this dimension knob and it starts to smear out the taps and you get this beautiful thing that is somewhere between delay and reverb and pure magic. I just love it. And then it has this onboard phaser as well and the phaser is just a small subtle touch that really when it interacts with the dimension that that sort of um, smearing parameter it just sounds it's 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 lovely so I love the polymoon as well Uh, and then the last one of the effects that I'm going to mention is actually the um, the Soma Cosmos. The Cosmos isn't an effect exactly, uh, but rather a looper. And it's not looping it in a straight way. It's deliberately looping it in an asymmetrical way, for lack of a better term. It loops uh, these patterns and they drift off in all different dimensions and directions. And you end up in this very meditative, very hypnotic state super easily. I love it.
Okay, on to the last piece of gear. My favorite piece of hardware, period. Uh, I often get this question, what's the last piece of gear you'd ever sell? Or what's the one that's most important to you? Or what's your favorite piece of hardware, period? What's your desert island hardware? Um, and the answer, invariably, is the Electron Octatrack. I just, there is nothing like it. It is never, I never thought that I needed a device like it until I played it and realized how well it satisfied my musical ideas and how well it satisfied the musical exploration process while also serving a bunch of really great utilitarian needs. It is ostensibly a sample player. I can easily sort of beat match your samples. It is running stereo samples, which is fantastic, uh, but you can very quickly get into sample mangling, get into this really weird territory. Uh, and then on top of all of that, it also is a mixer. <laughs> Uh, and as a mixer, it has four mono ins. I do wish it had more, but four is great. Uh, and these four mono ins can be sort of paired as two stereos, for example, or you know, two monos and one stereo, or have whatever combination you want. And with these, you can add on effects. Every single track, including the samples, have two effects that you can stack on. Um, and then with the audio in, it turns out that you know not only can do audio in, but you can also do MIDI out. It has eight polyphonic MIDI tracks uh, that are on top of all of this. And so uh, you could basically be sequencing all your devices, sending, routing all that audio into the OctaTrack, and then uh, playing it with a bunch of samples. And then finally, the very last step, that special sauce, are the scenes. The OctaTrack scenes are ways to rapidly change many, many parameters all at once and to fade them with a crossfader. You can either drop it immediately by flipping the crossfader from one side to the other without hesitation, or you can slowly slide it to one side to the other and get these subtle parameter changes, uh, you know, everything you could possibly imagine, slowing down a sample, speeding it up, changing, I don't know, sample rate reduction or a filter or, uh, you know, queuing in audio, moving the audio out. It's just the, the, it is limited only by your imagination, but it is every time I use it, my imagination is uh, expanded. I realize all of the other things I can do with it. There are very few devices that make me feel as happy to play and make me feel as satisfied with the final song as the Electron Octatrack. It is really, truly a special instrument. Uh, I don't know what the future of the Octatrack is. The one I have is the Mark II, of course. Uh, I don't know if there will ever be a Mark III. There's been lots of talk about that online if you've never seen that. But if it had to be the Mark two for the rest of my life, I'm okay with that because it's that special. It is really unlike anything else that I've ever worked with. Sampler, sequencer, mixer, scene mangler, uh, just magic maker. Yeah, if you haven't, check out the Octatrack, please. All right, that's it. That's Those are my favorite pieces of gear. Everything from my favorite monosynth to my favorite piece of hardware. I hope this has been useful. I can't tell you what the best is, but from the perspective of being able to perform and craft sounds and, and have fun, these are it. These are the ones that I have no intention of selling and that will keep on inspiring me in the years to come. So thanks for indulging me and I'll see you around. Take care.